Okay, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to lift a garage door with both springs broken. Or in this case, a spring with no spring uh, door with no spring tension. For some reason, we had a broken spring, and the other spring is still active. Yet the cables came off of the drums, so that means there's no lifting force from at least the one still active spring, um, which is not active any longer. It still should be functional, but somehow the cables came off. We're not certain how or why, but I just want to illustrate how to open it up. A dead door, literally no assistance whatsoever, all done with manual force. I just recently had to do that. I did it with the uh, homeowners here so we can get the cars out so we can do the work to replace these springs. But I'm going to illustrate one more time. Some key things I'd like to mention. First off, I do wear steel toe boots. Without steel toe boots, you might have a set of blocks of sorts that might help you with the first hand hold, okay? The second thing is, you want to get your garage door opener in a position ready to uh, lock in place as soon as I get it fully open. So if you understand how to do that, usually there's an inner trolley and an outer trolley. The inner one is the one that slides back and the outer one is the one that locks into that one, okay? And so right now I have the inner trolley all the way up to the top waiting for me. I can do that by ax, uh, pressing the button on the wall and uh, making that go and stop wherever I want it to if the opener is working. And so I have it set all the way up to the top to be ready to receive. And I have this in a ready to lock position, okay? So right when they come together, they will latch and hold the door open for me so I can either make my emergency exit if I were the homeowner or um, allow the, the, tech, the technician his workspace by allowing the homeowners to remove the vehicles. So this is a homeowner slash technical type of training on this one, okay? So. This is what we do, again, with those two things in mind. I also, as well, always wear safety uh, gloves, for one, um, to protect my watch, and um, to protect my second most widely used um, bodily functions are my eyes, so I got that covered. And actually, this is somewhat of a safety cover, too. It's a soft hat. Trust me how many bumps and scrapes I saved from this, and sometimes, Keeping my nose out of trouble, right? Okay, so um, repeat customer, really great people. So here we go. I almost sounded like Trump right there. Here we go. Okay, I'm making sure to double check everything in my mind and I'm ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do now, um, if, I don't know if you can see this, the cables are both off, okay? So that one's hanging. So not so much a big deal when you're going up. You don't need to know or worry about the cables. In fact, stick around and I'll also show you how to close this. So this is technical, this is what our technicians should do. This is what I would be training to our technicians, as well as helping a homeowner in case of an emergency. If you've got the power, the strength to do it, and you know bodily injuries at all, um, and even marginal, marginally, you could probably handle this as long as you can really do this, okay? Crouch and lift up, usually you can do it. But if you have any other back problems and stuff like that, I would not even suggest you try it, okay? But it's something we commonly have to do in our industry, um, you know, as daunting as it is. Okay, so here we go. The first thing I'm gonna do is try to lift it up. Now, the the one, one key point I'm going to make is that it's always heavier the farther it is down, okay? So the minute you get it up a little bit more, it gets lighter and lighter the higher you go. So don't worry that you can get past the initial Force, it's not going to be that heavy all the way up. Just imagine it's getting lighter. That's the hardest it will be. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab here, try not to pull in, but just go straight up. Okay? I do it enough to stick my foot under, obviously, because I have the steel toe shoe. But you can also have a set of blocks here, so when you lift up, you can push the blocks underneath there in order to get your one hand pull. Okay, so that's the first step. And then, while lifting, going through your lift, you want to make sure the door stays level. You can't, like if you had two people, which is obviously helpful, um, one person here, one person here, you can't have this guy lifting up like that because it'll all get wedged and things really bad happen. And then two people get frustrated and give up and yeah, you don't want that to happen. And remember, this is about 200 pounds, so you don't want anything to go wrong and you don't want it to come crashing down. So do everything right the first time and you'll be fine. The worst thing that could happen is a cable gets caught, set it back down, you might have to deal with that. And that's more so when we're coming back down and I'll watch this again. So, First thing is, get my hand underneath there, and when I lift, keep it stable, lift all the way up into the latch. Here we go. So the 
hand hold here. I'm going to put one hand on here. This is kind of how I normally do it. Crouch a little bit with one hand here. One hand over here to stabilize. Watch this. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is straighten up my legs. I'm trying to keep my back as straight as possible. Tell me how well I did in the comments, huh? Ah, uh, I gotcha. All right, here we go. Okay, so from here, your other hand. Now you're back. A little bit. So the arm hook here is also very, very helpful. So you're not having to worry about your grip strength. Then, right. That's how we do it. Dude, that center style looks bad, really bad. This is how you keep it up. Technically or professionally, live scripts are always important. I push up a tiny bit. Secure this in the back by making sure it's secure. This is all you end up with to do. Look at that. End up a little something like that. That happened the first time. This happened the second time. A little dirty, grimy, but okay. So now if you want to see how to do it, bring it down. Stick around or watch part two, whatever. I might make a second video or just continue from here. It's actually what I'm gonna do. So thanks for watching the first part. I'll show you this. Okay. Now the second part. Alright. I'm gonna take you with me. The second part has is a little more tricky. Okay. First of all, I'm starting with this right here. This is this is my security. Okay. This is the part that's really important. And actually, let me switch angles here. Okay, just so I can make sure everything gets in focus uh, and in view here. So here we go. This one's very important because right now, when I'm done here, this is going to hold all of the weight of the door. Okay, from come crashing down, from 200 pounds sliding down. This literally is a moving wall. You know what I'm saying, right? It's 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 a it's a wall in your home. Well, it's also about 200 pounds of steel and. All kinds of stuff so so uh, if I don't press the wrong buttons I'll continue this video and I'll do so well okay here we go and the second part is uh, the second part is right here okay so that's the, the first part is the the vice grips to hold it I mean some people could use a two by four if you want if you're a lay person and you have it or even a ladder um, something like that to kind of prop up the door and just make sure it doesn't fall but this is when we get the action going to, to, to release it. Okay, so that's number two. Get that prepared. You get ready for that. But the, I think one of the most important things to, to, to mention, this is the ninja tip. This is from experience. This is where um, the one mistake you don't want to do is get these cables in a position where they can get hung up or caught on the track anywhere. Okay? So let's say you're starting to pull up and then and one side gets hung up or it's starting to come down, oh, you're in a bad way. So, this is my tip. Watch closely. Take, you want to take this cable and do so every time and go over the horizontal track. Okay, I'm gonna have to use my other hand here. Did you see what's going on there? So this whole cable now is coming from the door. Where is it? It's coming from the door and going directly above this horizontal track so now that's going to keep this free and clear the whole travel as I lift the door it's going up and above and over and around okay that way and you do this on both sides that way if this let me give an illustration see this is an illustration okay so this is an illustration when it gets hung up look what's happening here okay I'm trying to pull it as well I'm trying to pull through and look at this okay you don't want anything like that to happen while you're trying to let down a door and this happens, it definitely does. So this, this cable, I want to be free on both sides, okay? Completely free, not touching anything. It even holds it away from the tracks a little bit um, and just keeps it free. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Hopefully I won't push the wrong button again. Okay, okay. This is going up and over with one hand. It's close to a challenge. But I love challenges. Okay, there we go. Free and clear, you see that? That's what we need. Without it, you are doomed. You understand? So take that from me. That's, this is, it's actually almost sometimes harder to let down the door if you do it the wrong way than it is to open it even with all that strength necessary. So here we go. 
the last part is now what I'm gonna do since I have since I have this don't get dizzy on me here uh, since I have this in place I believe it's firm well, all I need to do is give this a tiny tug okay a tiny tug and it should move just a tiny bit but I'm gonna be ready on my feet boy if I have to I'm gonna drop this camera and run to the door to save it but you should see it move just a slight bit there okay I just want it disconnected a tiny bit that way when I release when I release over here actually I'm gonna set this back down when I release over here I'll have full control of the door again here we go okay, here we are. all right now this is even more important make sure this door is straight when it comes down without a doubt actually I'm not going to start yet. I'm going to do it like the springs I think I need. And in fact, I should have weighed this dang door <laughs> the first time I did it. <laughs> Just to show you guys, I got so stuck in the video. Here we go. Okay. Here I was making a quick video on uh, how to open a door in case of an emergency. <laughs> yeah. Back in. Okay, still go. Right. Did not want to have to lift this door one more time. Going. Going back to where I was. I'm going to release this. Okay, it should be a tiny little movement, like a tiny bit. Now I've got full control right here. Need to do something with this, I'm not going to drop it. So, back to the center so I can make sure that the whole door broke down levelly. It was like that, I'm in bad shape. And then we go. I do the same way, okay? Put these, put them on my foot so I can get my hands out. <laughs> we'll show you the blocks once again. And then where I started before, low and high, a little bit of body push, and down. That's how we do it. Very simple. In fact, I should have left it up a little bit. But that's how you do it when, um, when you're all alone and you need that little extra uh, effort, no help from the springs, to get the door open and get the door closed. It is a little bit of work, but it can be done. So don't feel intimidated. Um, Definitely get a professional. Just, just get a professional. They know how to check the room and make sure everything is working well. In fact, one scare I had was this little bracket right here. It's called a style. The center style is actually cracked. So it may have actually had a little trouble holding it while it was up in the top position. Had it broken completely, it would not have held up. You could have gotten injured or damaged or something. So this is probably part three. I'm just going to keep it rolling. So here it is, part three. What I'm doing right now, in order to find out what I need to do to fix these springs, I need a, uh, uh, a good weight measurement on the door for choice of springs. Can you see the broken one? It's right there. Where's my hand? No, that's the other one. It's on this side. There you go. Right here. Uh, so in order to determine what springs I use, since I'm not going to lift it again, I brought a couple sets with me, but in order to know exactly which ones to use, how are you gonna do it? Do you do it by guess? Probably not, not a very, <laughs> not a very reliable issue or uh, approach. Uh, in fact, be, especially if you wanna do it right, you can guess if you're willing to do it again and again, but you have to get the door balanced just right now. Don't wanna guess, you wanna do it right, get a chart. We have a family chart that we use that, that tells us every single door in existence by the weight and the height and the size and how it correlates to the screen. But first of all, so I already understand the weight, the size, uh, sorry, the size, but now I need to know the weight. And the weight, you can only tell by weighing the door. Now, this, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weigh it. In fact, I'm using a standard bathroom scale. I'm gonna check my weight first, just 
give it a shot here, just to know if the scale is consistent, or if I had a heavy lunge, okay? And I'm gonna get it ready to put under the center of the door. I can't weigh over there because it'll be lopsided. I weigh it under the center of the door and kind of get the door to also balance up. So here we go. Using the same technique, the scale zeros, and then I drop it. I can also do a little movement back and forth. I got 189, 190 consistently. So I lift up a little bit, put it back to 190. I push down, comes back to 190 around there. So I'm convinced the steel door, all the hinges, the smaller hinges, insulated door, in this case is 190 pounds. So I need to go back out there and grab my 100 pound screen. <laughs> So I grab 290s and 280s. Okay, so let's do this all over again. To give you an idea, the springs that are on here now are 207 by one and three quarter by 20 inch. You might say 25. This one says 31. Oh, 234 by 31. So that's very strange because the 31 inch screen, normally the longer one doesn't break as quick unless they, somebody did them off. Normally we try to blend them perfectly, but that is three sizes away from the, that one. So this one I don't even have here, it's one lower and that one is one higher than I have even here. So it's kind of like split this whole gap. I was gonna use the one like that, but much, much longer and then the heaviest one I have here. Okay, so in essence, what I'm going to use is a 234 by 35 and a 225 by 33. Okay, so you understand, that last number I said I use is the length of the spring, the length denotes the life expectancy, and so they're getting much light, longer life spring. So take a note, take a look where it's at now, just look. And you can kind of see where, let's get kind of in the center of the door, there we go, where the springs line up with the rest of the door, like this one lines up with like near two thirds of the way out from the end of this style here. And this one almost to the end, like three quarters the way of that style. But let's see where the new ones line up. Watch this. Okay, so, yep, here we go. I'll have to lift it all over again. We go lifting again, get ready to latch. I have to do the cable all over again. Here we go. Okay. Oh. It's job. footsteps. I should have taken two of those back. Three of them actually. Okay. Back down. Heels are set. Should put this in. Learn from my mistakes. Yeah. A little bit of movement. Nothing scary, no crazy sounds. Okay. Now we'll show. Okay. Was that three or four times? Wow. Okay. So now I need the ladder that the camera is on to do the work. So I guess, uh, ideally I wish you were here, so you can see what you won't be able to see in just a moment. But hopefully you got all the information you'll need this time. Take
wake up. I need a, my entourage in here. Fix me up. All right. How do I look? Okay, thank you. All right, so this is a question I'm frequent to ask. I'm, I very highly, I believe in this question is the most important. Out of all the work we've done here so far, look, make everything look nice, sound nice, that's all good. But this is the most important part. Is it safe? This is how you can tell if your garage door spring has been properly chosen for your door and how um, your home will be as safe as it could possibly be. The opener's not going to have to lift much more than it was designed to do. <clears throat> In a safety situation, when you pull this and you've got to run, right? you got to get out. you got to go. Now is when your door should be properly balanced. When the door springs are put on and the cables are back on and the door springs are lifting the same weight the door is, it should be balanced. Okay? And what is a balance? The balance is when your, uh, <clears throat> your door, we, we, we can lift up your door at any moment and it will stay right when I take my hands off. So picture this, if I have to have, like say this is a 190 pound door, I have to have 190 pounds of lifting force, right? But if I have 195, ah, it would probably spring up, wouldn't it? <clears throat> or if I have a 195 pound door and only put a 195, it will fall with that five pounds. Picture a pulley scale, okay? Pulley here and a rope around the two and then two plates right here. I put five pounds here, five pounds here, no matter where I pull that scale. If I just pull this side, this, the other side will fall, and I can take my hands off and it'll stay right there. It'll just stay in place, right? But say I put six pounds here, you know, I'm trying to lift it, what's gonna happen? I mean, the same principle. If I have anything out of balance here, it'll show. So I've just replaced the two springs with the springs I was telling you about, real high cycle springs, by the way. Uh, and so this is what I'm gonna show you. Right now, I'm lifting the spring, the, the door up on my own without the opener. And so I'm able to lift it. And basically take my hands off anywhere I want and it stays right there. That is a perfect balance. It's not jetting upwards where I have to force it back down. And it's not falling back down. This means the opener is not gonna have to move much more than just a little bit of inertia force, okay? I like to say, forgive me if this sounds inappropriate, but I like to say even a pregnant lady with a broken arm should be able to lift the door when I have um, when I've perfectly balanced it, or when they follow my system of uh, a spring change, okay? Which consists of uh, family charts, um, industry family charts, the proper technique, which would be weighing the door, uh, and then obviously winding it properly and doing all that stuff. So now you can actually hear how, how, uh, how easy the door is flowing right now. Um, and I think there was one more point I was going to make, I don't know which one it was. Anyways. Um, but th this is how you can tell. Basically, when I come over here, and, and I actually prefer a little rock upwards like that, like you saw that, because I know there's going to be no downward momentum with an upward rock. Got that? Okay. So if I bring down here, the weight does change a little bit, and that's why, the, uh, as far as the, all the physics involved here, the door starts to fall at some point, and that's when the, the springs take effect to kind of lift that back up. So they wind up as it's going down, adding more force to lift. So it's kind of interesting. I don't know if you can see that, but they're winding up as we pull the door down, kind of ready to spring back up. But um, this is a perfect door balance. You have any questions? Let me know. And I will answer, all right? Thank you. So what's happening now, remember the inner trolley, the part that's uh, supposed to meet the door and reconnect? Watch. Almost. Let's lift the door to meet them. There we go. I could use a little bit more down. Oh, I know, because I just put on that bracket, so it might have, I might have mounted a little bit lower. Oh, yeah, a little bit lower. So, but let's just try the door operation. Here we go. Looks good, sounds good, works good. Really happy about that, good. Now, to show you, this is the down, uh, these are the uh, travel directions, travel, I'm sorry, distances, not directions, distances. And each one has a direction. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna increase the down, I'm gonna increase it just a tiny bit, do it with a small flat screwdriver, putting a quarter to half a turn, something like that. Check that out. 
clear that gap and make it seal very well. Very nice. I think I want to go just a tiny bit more on that and then we're good. And like I said, part of that pre-job, post-job prep checklist is, okay, those are at five. That's not unreasonable for a three-quarter horsepower, or sorry, three, one-third horsepower. That's actually standard and at good range. So we're all set. Job well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, guys, and thank you for uh, choosing a quality garage doors, huh?